following is a production of Cary TV, the town of Cary's government access channel. Hello, I'm Harold Weinbrecht, Mayor of Cary, and this is Cary Matters, the monthly program designed to help keep you informed about issues that your council members are working on for our community. Joining me as co-host this month is Gail Adcock, who's represented Cary's District D since 2007 and is our Mayor Pro Tem. District D is mostly southwestern Cary, mm -hmm. and Gail, we're really happy you're here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. All right. Why don't you give us a rundown of what's on this month's episode? I'd be happy to do that. We just finished an election for three council seats, and our current council members each won re-election. During the campaign season, these council members were frequently asked about their priorities for the next four years. I think it would be a good idea to share those priorities with our citizens who may not have heard them during the campaign. Then after the break, we'll answer questions about the new social media search tool and an upcoming document shredding event. Okay, sounds like a plan. I'll start with Council Member Ed Yerha. Mr. Yerha was appointed in 2012 and was just elected to a four-year term. Despite his short time on council, he has a lot of experience and wisdom. He moved to Cary in 1995 and almost immediately became involved in his community. Before being appointed in 2012, he served on numerous town advisory boards, including chairman of the Planning and Zoning Board. One of his top priorities for the next four years is staying true to the town's official statement. He believes that despite the town's size, we must never lose that what makes Cary Cary. To put it simply, be the best big small town in America. Another one of his priorities is maintaining the town's strong financial position. Ed believes that a solid financial foundation enables us to pursue the things that really matter, such as public safety, environmental stewardship, and infrastructure for responsible quality growth. He also lists as a top priority to work with the legislature to limit legislative activity that would result in placing limits on municipal government authority. Like many officials, Ed believes that we know what is best for our citizens, and I agree with that 100%. I've been telling Ed for over a year that he's the least newbie newbie I've ever met. <laughs> So I was very pleased that he was uh, re-elected. I'm also pleased to announce that Jennifer Robinson was re-elected to another four-year term. Jennifer first visited Cary in 1986 for Cary Band Day as a member of her Northern Virginia High School's marching band. Having never forgotten the beautiful and friendly town, Jennifer returned in 1995 with her husband to raise their family. And just like Ed, Jennifer was appointed to her initial council seat back in 1999. She was just re-elected to her fifth term as the representative for District A. District A is one of our fastest growing districts and is mostly west of Highway 55. Jennifer represents our area on several regional boards to address issues that transcend Cary's borders, such as future development and population increases, economic development, transportation, water quality, and environmental protection, a lot a of lot. things. <laughs> if that doesn't keep her busy enough, she is constantly working on growth issues and always looking for ways to make things better for her district and the town as a whole. Jennifer says her initial goal for this term will be to look at town development ordinances and how they pertain to buffers, densities, and grading. She wants to make sure that our ordinances achieve our residents' vision for the community. Very good. Good for her. Yeah, long <laughs> list. Well, our longest serving council member and only veteran of armed forces, Jack Smith, was just elected to serve a seventh term. Jack was actually born in Germany and became a citizen of the United States in 1968. In 1986, 
Jack was transferred from Boston to Cary to work with his work, and uh, it didn't take long for him to fall in love with the community. He wanted to do everything he could for his new hometown, believing that citizen involvement was and is a hallmark of the democratic process. Jack decided to run for town council to advocate for citizens and to assist the town with developing long range, a long range perspective. Jack's core principles are the same as they were when he was first elected in 1989, and that is keep taxes low, maintain fiscal responsibility, protect our neighborhoods, and enhance our quality of life. For this term, he wants to continue downtown momentum, tackle aging infrastructure and pent-up maintenance demands, and apply creative approaches to aging infill areas like shopping malls, where our current planning utilizes the Imagine Carry process. Jack also has a really good sense of humor because we're always teasing him about <laughs> being a veteran in many ways. Uh, we're very fortunate to serve with such committed and dedicated people. We certainly are. And it's great to know that we all get along even though we have differing perspectives on important issues. Well, coming up after the break, we're gonna tackle some of the questions we've been hearing from you. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. but I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. We're back. Thanks for staying with us. It's time now for us to address some of the questions we've been getting from the public. Gail, what do you have for us? Well, we're frequently asked about how the town is using technology and improving our use of it. So the question is, what are we doing in this area? Good question. <laughs> well, you don't have to have been in Cary very long to know that we're always looking for ways to leverage technology to help us do more at Town Hall. Google did. and just name us as North Carolina's technology capital. A great example that comes to mind is Aquastar, our automated reading system, meter reading system. Our newest initiative involves retaining public records, which is something we're required to do under state law. That's so that you, our citizens, can truly see and know what's going on in your town government. Well, you may not realize this, but every tweet, post, photo, video that comes across the town's 12 social media sites, that's right, 12 social media sites, is a public record. Man, we have to keep track of all of them. You use social media sites, right, Gail? Some, but technology is changing so rapidly, it's really hard to keep up. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. My daughters seem to know more about social media than me, and you know I work for a software company. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of citizens use social media too, and the town has just launched a search tool that will search the town's Facebook and Twitter accounts for information. The tool is easy and intuitive to use, even for not so social media savvy people like me. All you have to do is enter keywords in the bar and see results from all of the town's social media sites. And these include Facebook and Twitter accounts for the Booth Amphitheater, the downtown, news, traffic, safety, YouTube, and even fun stuff. 
<laughs> I didn't even realize we were doing that much tweeting and Facebooking, if Facebooking's even a word. <laughs> Me neither. Well, we actually have over 10,000 folks engaging with us socially, and that's a lot of records to keep up with. I'm kind of interested to see if we can find any anything in the social media sites and what we can find in the social, social media sites that's going to be fun. Do you, you got does, anything else? Does that mean 10,000 people like us? I hope, I hope so. it's more than 10,000. <laughs> uh, we've received questions about how to dispose of documents with sensitive information. People want to know if there are any town programs to help. Mm, that's another good question. So it's your turn to answer a tough question. Well, I'm glad to say the answer is yes. The town has the means to properly dispose of sensitive documents. In keeping with our mission to preserve and protect our environment, the town will host a paper shredding event on Saturday, November 16th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the town's Garmin Operations Center on 400 James Jackson Road. Bring up to three boxes of paper documents for free on-site sh secure shredding. All shredded paper will be recycled. Last year, 643 citizens brought over, get this, 32,750 pounds of paper for shredding and recycling. This event is free, but open only to carry residents. No commercial interests are permitted. This event is just one of the many ways we are saving landfill space and adding to a sustainable future. Wow. I guess it's time for me to start collecting all those documents I've got squirreled away all over the house. It may take you a few weeks to do that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, coming up after the break, we're going to give you some insights into what's going on in October, I mean November, at Town Hall and how you can be involved and included. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. We're back. In this final segment of Caring Matters, we want to let you know what's happening in November and how you can be involved. Gail, why don't you start us out? Okay. November has one regularly scheduled council meeting on Thursday the 21st at 6.30. The Operations Committee will meet on Thursday the 7th at 5.30. The council also has a work session scheduled for Tuesday the 19th, which starts at 5 p.m. One of the topics we plan to discuss is transportation system requirements. All righty. There's a lot of fun events going on in Cary for the month of November at the Cary Arts Center, which include the Triangle Brass Band, the Triangle Wind Ensemble, Dallas Band, the Concert Singers, and more. You can find out about all of these events going on by going to the town's website and searching for festivals and events. And if your interests are in sports, there's a treat for everyone. We will be hosting the ACC Women's Championship at Wake Med Soccer Park starting on November the 8th. I was gonna say, there's something to carry for everybody no matter what your interests are. That's right. And there are several town holidays this month, which means that town offices will be closed and some solid waste collection schedules will change. The first holiday is Veterans Day on November 11th. November 28th is Thanksgiving. All town offices will be closed Thursday and Friday. Be sure to review your holiday collection schedule, which was mailed to you, or if you've lost it, just take a look online. 
Well, that's it for this edition of Carry Matters. We appreciate your watching and hope that what we've shared has been interesting for you. Please let us hear from you about the topics discussed on the show. Because your time is important, we want Carry Matters to be of value to you as we work to bring you, our citizens, closer to your government. That's right. And remember, help keep Carry litter free, clean, green, and beautiful by volunteering with our Spruce program. Thanks for watching, and as always, thanks for choosing to call Carrie home. This has been a production of Carrie TV. Visit the Town of Cary's website at townofcary.org.